Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, would you please rise for the procession of graduands and remain standing for the academic procession?
Welcome to the Spring Convocation of Kwantlen Polytechnic University. We start by honoring our name, which was bestowed upon us by the Kwantlen First Nation, and we welcome you to their traditional territories. We are especially honored to have Kevin Kelly and Michael Gabriel to, to come here and provide a blessing to the convocation. Well, see, um, I really want to thank um, the Kwantlen Polytech University for um, respecting the land you're on today. Um, you're on my wife's territory. I'm married to her traditional name, Stakwasan. Her English name is Chief Brennan Gabriel. And um, years ago, she was on the stage like you today. She got a doctorate from the university and speaks very highly of it. Um, I know my wife would want me to say to the students that are graduating today, I understand a lot of it's for health um, and the disabilities. And I always love coming for this day because um, in our community, we always say to our future, our grandchildren, you have to be healthy, but you also need a good education in today's day and age. So I congratulate each and every one of the students on a job well done. And to the parents, the grandparents, family, uh, what an honor for you to be here for a wonderful day to be with your children, your grandchildren. I just wanted to thank you, welcome you to Kwantlen, and I thank you for the honor, all my relations. Would you please uh, stay standing for the singing of O Canada, led by Julia Johnston, a student in KPU's music program.
please be seated. Thank you, Julia. I declare Kwantlen Polytechnic's University Convocation in session to honor our 2015 graduates. My name is Alan Davis. I have the honor of serving as KPU's President and Vice Chancellor. Convocation means to call together by summons, and in universities, convocations are called for the conferring of degrees and for the recognition of outstanding achievement. And so it is today that we call colleagues and friends together to honor KPU's graduates and honorary and distinguished awardees of 2015. I would like to introduce the members of the platform party. Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced or we'll be here all night. <laughs> KPU's Chancellor, Dr. George Melville. Representing the KPU Board of Governors, Bruce Wendell and Jeff Dean. Representing KPU's Foundation Board, Alan Sung. And representing the KPU Alumni Association, Brandon Hastings. Distinguished alumna recipient, Tanya Dick. Vice Chair of the University Senate, Dr. Jennifer Au the members of our faculty who are here today. The Provost and Vice President Academic, Dr. Salvador Ferreras. The University Registrar and Marshal of Convocation, Zena Mitchell. Vice Provost for Students, Dr. Jane Fee. Associate Vice President, Administration, Harry Gray. Director of Government and External Relations, Marlene Graziano. Executive Director of Marketing and Recruitment, Joanne Saunders, the deans, associate deans, and other members of the university's administration. Also representing the BCGEU is Kim Jans, and representing the Kwantlen Faculty Association is Bob Davis. We also have our honorary degree recipient, Jim Sinclair. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in acknowledging the platform party. Joining us today in the audience is Glenis Zilm, a past honorary degree recipient and renowned healthcare historian. Welcome, Glenis. And also Terry Van Steinberg, president of the Quantum, Fol Fol Quantum Faculty Association. <laughs> and many friends, family, and colleagues of Jim Sinclair, and of course, friends and family of the graduates. Welcome. Chancellor Melville, would you please bring greetings to the convocation? President Davis, board members, Senate members, graduates, honored guests, family members, faculty, staff and alumni, welcome to Kwantlen Polytechnic University's convocation ceremony. I am honored to stand before our graduates and share their special day. Today, along with your friends and family, we celebrate the many accomplishments and successes you have achieved as learners at KPU. I myself have learned many lessons of my own over the years through trial and error, from prepared choices to spontaneous decisions, through circumstantial joyous and sometimes trying times, I have learned a lot and I would like to share with you one piece of advice. When opportunity presents itself, seize it. And when you do, bring to it your talents, your ideas, your passions and your commitment. Opportunities can be daunting and risky and have all seen many come and many go. We've all missed opportunities, not realizing until we see someone else's accomplishment what we could have achieved had we only acted. Opportunities are a privilege, not an entitlement, and they should be treated as such. So do not shy away bashfully or ignorantly from something that may change your life. Your education comes from a unique institution so live your lives and fulfill your dreams as an extension of KPU. Commit yourself to your community. Donate your time and talent to help transform and change your communities for the better. We wish you great happiness and we wish you great success. Once again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. I invite Amy Yumura to address the convocation on behalf of the graduates. 
Emmy is a graduate of the Faculty of Academic and Career Advancement. Emmy. Good afternoon. I'm standing here today with appreciation for KPU. Gratitude for my career choices and life success program directors, Ellie Morgan and Marian Becker, and respect for all graduates here for today for accomplishing their programs at KPU. I was introduced to KPU and the CCLS program by a coordinator of a truncheon house last summer. I'm a single mother of a two-year-old. We freed ourselves from a dysfunctional relationship in 2013. I was desperately in need of change, a major transformation of my life and my career. I didn't know where to start. I was caught up in self-defeating thoughts, frustrated, asking myself, wasn't I supposed to have an ordinary life like my family did and my friends do? I felt lost not knowing where I was going, what I liked to do, who I was, and who I wanted to be. Before I came to KPU, I had been trying to find employment to support ourselves, but I couldn't find a job I liked. Although I had a university degree in education from my home country, Japan, having no Canadian educational background nor Canadian work experience, prevented me from getting to where I wanted to be. At that time, I got to know about CCLS. I remember there being a battle in my head, my insecurities telling me I couldn't keep up in university classes. Was my English good enough? Am I too old to go back to school? On top of that, I needed to leave my son behind in daycare. It was a difficult decision to make but I'm glad I took the opportunity. I clearly remember the very first day in class. I was with 15 classmates, and we were mostly mature students with various reasons for deciding to take the course. Each one of us had different goals, but everybody agreed to one. We want to have confidence in ourselves. The director, Ellie, was so clear on this point. Nobody can bring you and make you feel confident. That is not something you can get overnight either. Confidence is internally created and it will only come from your actions by hard work. That was a true aha moment for me. I repeated what she said in my head and I was determined. Nobody but myself. I have to go get it. During the program, I discovered myself what I value in life, what I want to achieve. I put a lot of effort into the tasks and assignments I was given, and I worked really hard. CCLS program opened up many doors to carry opportunities. I started with no Canadian work experience and ended up having completed three work placements during the program. Immediately after my third placement, I was hired by the CEO at an immigration consultant office. After gaining the work experience I needed, I was able to join Van City Group as a financial services representative. I'm now living my life with clear visions and goals because my time at KPU. My goals and passions are to give back to my community, to continue to volunteer my time to support my single mothers and children and to ultimately offer a financial literacy program to families in need. Today, I still ask myself the same question. Wasn't I supposed to have an ordinary life? My answer is no. I'm not supposed to have an ordinary life, and I'm very grateful to have an extraordinary life thanks to KPU and the support and encouragement I've received from people I've met here. We all have the right and the ability to make our dreams into reality. You can achieve whatever you set your mind to. The hard work always answers, and the choice is always yours. I would like to leave the following questions with you today 
as we embark on the next chapter of our lives. What are your next goals, visions, and dreams for your future? What does your success look like? Are you driving towards it? Let's go out and shine. We are all responsible to be productive members of a society. Today is the day we all should be proud of our great accomplishments. Today is the day we begin our new journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Emmy. It was wonderful. Each year, KPU awards honorary doctoral degrees for outstanding and sustained achievement in our community by people within and outside of the university who reflect our values and who represent the very best in citizenship through leadership, academic endeavor, creativity, public service, advocacy, entrepreneurship, a legacy of respect and understanding towards others, and for humanitarian contributions. The degrees are awarded honoris causa for the sake of honor. I have the privilege of introducing you to you today Jim Sinclair, who has been selected and approved by the Senate of KPU to receive the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa in recognition of his community and public service. <laughs> Throughout Jim's Jim Sinclair's career, he has been a strong advocate for the rights of all working people for a safe workplace and fair wages, and has been a vocal supporter of public services that support the needs of our communities. His commitment to working people began early in his life, walking his first picket line when he was 17 years old in support of striking immigrant women, women seeking a first collective agreement. He was a youth worker in Ontario housing projects and a staff member of the Latin American Working Group. Jim was the president of the BC Federation of Labor from 1999 to 2014. The BC Fed represents over 500,000 members from affiliated unions across the province working in every aspect of the BC economy. Under his leadership, the Federation has become a strong voice for all working people especially some of the most exploited and underpaid workers in our province, such as farm workers, silviculture workers, late night gas attendants, and minimum wage workers. Prior to his time as president, Jim spent 18 years at the United Fishermen and Allied Workers Union, where he had held a number of positions, including associate editor of the union newspaper, health and safety director, organizer, and as an elected officer of the union. He lives in Port Moody with his longtime partner, Susan. They have a son, Lee, who is a shipyard worker and a musician, and he's a student here at KPU. Chancellor Melville, I present to you Jim Sinclair, Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. They said I could say a few words, but I am a labor leader after all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me start by thanking Kwantlen University and the Senate for honoring my work as a labor leader in our province. I also want to thank the staff of the university, including the support staff who are members of the BC Government Employees Union, and the members of the Kwantlen Faculty Association, and the provincial organization, the Federation of Post-Secondary Educators. The work that you all do collectively, day in and day out, made it not only possible for the people to be here to celebrate their graduation today, but you make the people of this province skilled, knowledgeable, and educated citizens. 
I also want to thank my family who is here today, Susan Kroll, my lifelong partner, and my son Lee, whose wisdom, solidarity, and love have meant the world to me. And hopefully I will be back here to watch my son graduate this fall. They are joined today by many of my friends. They share this honor with me, for it is true that this award is being given to me, but I'm accepting it on behalf of all of them because none of us are make our way without support of the many in our lives. All the achievements that Kwantlen so gracefully mentions today and otherwise in their decision to award me the degree are the result of the collective efforts of the labor movement in British Columbia. The truth is, I never thought I'd be here today, standing here wearing a gown like this. It is unfortunate that my mother and my father are both gone because they would have relished a moment like this. Like working class mothers and fathers of the Depression generation, they know their dreams for a better and prosperous life for their children would never be realized without their children getting a good education. In fact, for working people, education can also be called hope. And let me say this has never been more true than today, because today's parents know that in a world where knowledge and skills have never been more critical for our children, charting a course in life without a post-secondary education is like jumping into a raging river without a life jacket or a raft. The survival rate has never been lower. The labor movement has one overriding value, and that is solidarity. The basis of that solidarity is that all workers are important people, and they're equal. We should be treated fairly with respect, go to work each day and earn a living wage, work at safe jobs. We should all retire, something you may not think about too seriously today, but you need to because without a pension, you retire without the dignity you deserve. You retire to poverty. And of course, we should not face harassment or discrimination because of our gender, who we choose to love, the color of our skin, or who we choose to worship. The test of our solidarity comes when picket lines go up and no one crosses them. But a solidarity will truly be a failure if it stops at the plant gate or office door, and if it is only practiced in the union hall or the picket line. I have over my many years come to understand that in order to make this precarious and precious planet survive, we will need to practice more human solidarity, regardless of the union card in your pocket or not. Our solidarity in the labor movement also supports public education. Not just because our members deliver the services that you enjoy and our children need good jobs, but because any modern economy demands it, and so does a vibrant, functioning democracy. On the first point, economies are not built on cheap, uh, modern economies are not built on cheap and unskilled labor, but on high wages and skilled workers. In fact, 75 to 80 percent of every new job created in British Columbia will require some form of post-secondary education. On the second point, as a journalist, I was taught to be proud of the fact that a free media, media was the oxygen of democracy. Later, I would conclude that if a media if a free media was the oxygen, then public education must be the lungs of any democracy. Because democracy only works with educated, engaged, and questioning citizens. For the record, I also want to say to the class today, trade unions have also believed and fought for public health care as a fundamental right of all human beings. It is in itself a profound act of solidarity that all working people can take their children to any doctor, in any hospital, in any part of the country and receive the same quality care without a visa card. Like my parents, labor leaders understood the value of public education years ago. More than 50 years ago at the founding convention of the Federation of Labor, there was a debate and a motion passed to open up a series of colleges and universities around British Columbia. At the time, there were only two in the whole province. That was in Victoria and in Vancouver. If you lived anywhere else, you were moving or out of luck. But public education didn't start then when we passed a motion, of course. It started over 150 years ago. And the public education that was founded then was based on the same principles I hope we have today. 
1846, Canadian Egerton Ryerson, one of the founders of public education in our country, provided this vision to us all. On the importance of education generally, we remark, he said, it is as necessary as light. It should be as common as water and as free as air. Yet as we meet today to celebrate our achievements as graduates, your achievements as graduates, the vision of Egerton Ryerson seems a ways off and the solidarity of my generation to your generation has never been as challenged. It's been tough for all of you and for Bill and his province. No surprise when my generation went to school, tuition covered 15% of the cost of education. Today there are post-secondary education institutions that students are paying 50% of that cost. Tuition fees have climbed by 76%. They're expected to raise 13% over the next four years so it won't get easier for the next group of people. Average debt, $28,000 for a student in British Columbia and Canada. $15 billion in debt for students graduating. In 1995, Canada topped the world educa in education spending per capita basis. In other words, we spent more than any other country on the planet per capita to make our education system work. Today, we're 14th. I asked this question, did Canada suddenly become a poorer country? What did our GDP drop? No, as tuition climbed and funding curtailed for public services, such as education and health care, another trend was happening. Taxes were cut dramatically, for those, especially with those with higher incomes. This was a choice. If we as British Columbians paid the same rate of taxes today as we paid in 2001, the government would experience an immediate increase of five to six billion dollars a year in revenue. Enough to make all of tuition free in British Columbia, raise K-12 funding at least to the national average, start a $10 an hour childcare program, and ensure decent housing and services for all British Columbians. I have no doubt that one of the single most effective things we could do as a society today in order to really ensure its economy and its people in the future is to make tuition free for all students in post-secondary institutions. Wishful thinking, numerous countries, including recently Germany, are investing their future by offering free tuition. This is not about the lack of collective wealth in our province. You and I all know we live in a very wealthy place, one of the wealthiest places on the planet. This is a crisis about the need for a collective will to use our, war, our wealth for the betterment of all British Columbians. You will face many choices in your lifetime. I know the experience of these past years will help you to make the right ones for yourself but there are other critical choices that cannot be made alone or cannot make things happen alone. We must make them together, ones that actually affect dramatically the world we live in. The choice to build and maintain a decent, well-funded public education system and public health care system based on equality of access. The choice to build a sustainable economy that acknowledges the very real climate crisis we face and the environmental crisis we face, but also respects the need for people to make a decent living at good paying jobs, the choice to participate actively in democracy, starting with your exercising your right to vote. Of course, too many stay home. The choice to challenge the growing inequality of our country and the world that leaves us all poorer. The really good news, you are living in a country where you are free to fight for those choices and to act on those choices. Learning is a lifetime practice and you will no doubt continue to find wisdom and knowledge in the future. I want to end with some wisdom I discovered some years ago and have tried to live by. It comes from the writings of Yasima Kadra, a well-known writer from Algeria. In his book, The Attack, he wrote, anyone who tells you that a greater symphony exists than the breath in your own body is lying. He wants to undermine your most beautiful possession the chance to profit from every moment of your life. If you start from that principle that your worst enemy is the very best, the very person who tries to sow hatred in your heart, you're halfway to happiness. All you have to do is raise your hand and take the rest. And remember this, there is nothing, absolutely nothing more important than your life. And your life isn't more important 
than other people's lives. Congratulations to all of you. I'm honored to be here today. This is truly one of the high points of my life. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Dr. Sinclair. We will now certify the graduands. Would all the graduands please rise, including you? <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, it is with great pleasure that I hereby certify that the graduands here present and those in absentia have met the requirements for the credentials to be presented this day as prescribed by the Senate of Kwantlen Polytechnic University, and I ask that you confer upon them their credentials. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the statutes of the province of British Columbia, and upon the recommendation of the Senate and the Registrar of Kwantlen Polytechnic University, I confer upon you the credential to which you are entitled and invest you with all the rights and privileges powers and responsibilities pertaining to the credential. In keeping with the tradition of university convocations, please move your tassels from the right to the left side. Yeah. Congratulations to you all. You may be seated. We now come to the part most of you have been waiting for, where we present each of our graduates to the convocation. Dr. Jane Fee will present the graduates and will be assisted by the registrar, Zena Mitchell. Offering congratulations to each graduate as they cross the stage will be myself with the presentation of a commemorative medal, Chancellor Melville, the Dean of the Faculty, and each graduate will be presented with an invitation from Jaya pa pa Panwa and Karina Sharma on behalf of the KPU Alumni Association. Graduates, please return to your seats as directed by the marshals after crossing the stage. We will try to keep this orderly and please stay until everyone has crossed the stage. But vocal encouragement of your favorite graduate is very welcome. This is after all a celebration. Dr. Fee. We will now recognize the graduates of the Faculty of Health. Joining us to greet the graduates will be the Dean of Health, Dr. True Freeman. Bachelor of Psychiatric Nursing. Marikar Angelis. Sifat Chabra. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Stephanie Cotton. Amanda Crandell. <laughs> Chantelle de la Cruz. Lauren Noel de Mostyn. <laughs> Whitney Natalia Edwards.
Christina Machado Gill. Graduating with distinction, Linda Ho. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Josen Isidro. <laughs> Comfort Koi. Graduating with distinction, Manpreet Sekon. <laughs> Thomas Shaw. Graduating with distinction, Deanne Victoria Smith. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Sarah Sendrai. Manraj Tind. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Harpreet Kol Atwal. Harleen Kaur Baines. <laughs> Sadiksha Baniya. <laughs> Mary Justine Bintz. Graduating with distinction, Dorothy Margaret Brassett. <laughs> Romaine Calimoso. <laughs> Maytab Chohan. Graduating with distinction, Alicia Nicole Claffey. Grace Ann Cortez. Graduating with distinction, Nicole Marie Shirley Cravignon. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Sarah Cumberworth. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Shanae Deptuck. Marissa Dion. <laughs> J. 
Jessica Feibel. <laughs> Lindsay Philotic. Graduating with distinction, Emma Florido. Graduating with distinction, Danielle Franson. Alexis Folks. Ashleen Garcha. <laughs> Diana Henson. <laughs> Andrea Hillier. Katera Hofioni. Tracy Huang. Graduating with distinction. Kaylee Dawn Napton. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Christine Puno Layson. <laughs> Lori G. Luce. Graduating with distinction, Jaspreet Kaur Mander. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Baldeep Mangat. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Jessica McDonald. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Tammy Melas. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Jessica Lynn Miller. Graduating with distinction, Amanda Ng. <laughs> Navjeet Singh Nijar. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Monica Ocampo. Paul Rajan Pada. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Aaron Robinson. <laughs> Kevin Aliana Ruiz.
Anastasia Ruprecht. Graduating with distinction, Cheryl Christiane Mejia Santos. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Victoria Strienko. <laughs> Emily Van Vliet. Graduating with distinction, Connie Wong. <laughs> Certificate in Graduate Nurse, Internationally Educated Reentry, Maria Angelica Alarcio. Pramila Bai Arun. Janice Corpuz Batenga. Sandeep Kar Brar. Princess Valerie and Luna Cataroja. Arnel Catolico Cinco. Nino Roland Comeros. Kathleen Cortez. Karen Donato. Corey Margaret Laurel Indique. Alan Florendo. Anna Margarita Garcia. Jifimo Isaac Givaris Gese. Ray Odilon Rombawa Guzman. <laughs> Cynthia Tagud Esau. <laughs> GT Basgran. Graduating with distinction, Parminder Kaur. <laughs> Shiny Mole Mundam Parayil Jose. <laughs> Ar 
Audrey Mosquera Nacionales. Ayodele Oni. Hazel Johnny O'Neill Pahite. Jonathan Ramirez Pardinez. Rosini Gostillo Pasuelo. Edwin Paul. Graduating with distinction, Raul Ragudin. Geraldine Villaluz Ranas. Graduating with distinction, May Ann Thornton. Winnie Lynn Kayanga Toribio. Graduating with distinction, Christine Joy Messina Villegas. Graduating with distinction, Porta Vanini Lim Wee. Tanya Fay Delistis Yap. Certificate in Healthcare Assistant, graduating with distinction, Joy Diane Dinsmore. Kamal Preet Kaur Gill. Graduating with distinction, Mary Anita Higgum. Kurpinder Kaur. Graduating with distinction, Harjinder Kaur. Marlene Elizabeth Maldonado. <laughs> Graduating with distinction, Gadilyn Saludes. <laughs> Teresa Rose Savage. Chancellor Melville, I present you the graduates of the Faculty of Health. We will now recognize the graduates of the Faculty of Academic and Career Advancement, 
Joining us to greet the graduates will be the Dean of the Faculty of Academic and Career Advancement, Dr. Patrick Donahoe. Diploma in English Language Proficiency, Samara Saleh Alamari. <laughs> Sali Amer Benham. Alice Idi Yue. Jiawan Zhang. <laughs> Citation in Career Choices and Life Success, Emmy Yamura. Certificate of Completion in Access Programs for People with Disabilities, Job Preparation, Alexander Bowen. <laughs> Fatima Astatani Calderon Guzman. Jae Hwan Lee. Hello. Katie Lee Miller. Hi, Michelle Stein. Colton Thomas Turner. <laughs> Certificate of Completion in Access Programs for People with Disabilities, Work Preparation, Jessica Lauren Behrens. <laughs> Alvin Bond. Julia Griggs. You, Rebecca Ruth Kirk.
Kyle Kurahashi. Alexis Lodewick. Travis Arthur Mayer. Tyler Page. Andrew Tilstone. Jennifer Rachel Grace Utendale. <laughs> Certificate of Completion in Vocational Skills Training, Child Care Aid Option, Access Programs for People with Disabilities, Christina Barr. Bianca Denham. Gina Gersheron Hunjan. Sydney Jean Walker. Certificate of Completion in Vocational Skills Training, Early Childhood Education, Educator Assistant Option, Access Program for People with Disabilities, Leanne Francis Hall. Chancellor Melville, I present to you the graduates of the Faculty of Academic and Career Advancement. <laughs> Chancellor Melville, this concludes the presentation of our graduates. Well, please join me in acknowledging our graduating class of 2015. Thank you. Now, graduates, I give you this opportunity to acknowledge your family and friends, those who supported you during your studies, so you stand up and turn around and make some noise. The presentation of the Student Awards will be made by Provost and Vice President Academic, Dr. Salvador Ferreris. Thank you, Dr. Davis. The Dean's Medal for each faculty is awarded to the KPU student who has demonstrated academic excellence, has contributed in a meaningful way to the community or their field of study, as well as supporting the learning environment of other students in their faculty. 
The Dean's Medal for the Faculty of Health is awarded to Amanda Ng. <laughs> Amanda was, an, was actively involved and very caring student right from the beginning of the program. Her warm and supportive way of interacting with her peers and faculty helped many people despite the pressures and challenges of completing a degree in just 27 months. That's like really fast. <laughs> Amanda is a very intelligent and compassionate woman who will contribute a lot to the nursing profession as she navigates the path of her new health career. Congratulations. <clears throat> The Dean's Medal for the Faculty of Academic and Career Advancement is awarded to Emi Yumura. <laughs> Emi demonstrated exemplary leadership in the CCLS program and outstanding citizenship since completing the program in the fall of 2014. She was invited to Victoria to speak about her experience for the government's announcement of a new single parents employment initiative in March 2015. She will receive the YMCA's Woman of Distinction Award on May 26th for her contribution to her community. Congratulations. The Governor General's Silver Academic Medal is awarded to a KPU student who has attained the highest academic standing in the graduation year of a bachelor's degree program. It is one of the highest academic honors KPU can bestow. The Governor General's Silver Academic Medal is awarded to Deanne Smith. <laughs> Deanne graduates as a well-decorated student, having been recognized for her excellence with a number of awards throughout her academic career at KPU. Deanne wanted to make her interest in mental health a career. She knew that psychiatric nursing was a path she would be passionate about and be successful. She has made the decision to go back to school as a single mother and has not looked back since. She already works as a registered psychiatric nurse and is employed in an acute inpatient setting, a tertiary facility, and a forensic hospital. This lets her continue learning in a range of environments, helping her gain experience to improve her skills as a psychiatric nurse. Deanne would like to pursue a master's degree in psychiatric nursing, possibly becoming an instructor. Outside of school, Deanne enjoys spending time with her husband, four children, and two dogs. They enjoy outdoor activities like camping, hiking, and off-roading. She also enjoys reading, scrapbooking, traveling, and sports. Congratulations, Deanne. The Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor's Medal is awarded to a graduate studying a substantial vocation or career program of fewer than two years, as well as someone who has excelled in their studies and contributed in a positive way to KPU or the community. The Lieutenant Governor's Medal is awarded to Leanne Hall. For Leanne, the Lieutenant Governor's Medal has demonstrated to her that hard work pays off. Since elementary school, Leanne wanted to do a program like this. She's a very serious student and has worked very hard to get to where she is today. 
Having worked through the Vocational Skills Training Child Care Aid and VST Early Childhood Education Assistant programs, Leanne has achieved her goals and wants to work in a group daycare. Throughout the program, she was an inspiration to her classmates, acting as a mentor and tutor to other VST students. Leanne is currently the chair of the Surrey APPD alumni group. Currently, Leanne works full-time at a local child care. In her free time, she is a committed volunteer, especially coaching young children how to bowl for many years. She is also an avid scrapbooker. Congratulations, Leanne. The President's Outstanding Graduate Award for a degree program is awarded to a KPU student who has excelled in their chosen fields of study and participated in university, student, and community activities to the benefit of others. The President's Outstanding Graduate Award is awarded to Zara Zendre. Sarah has always wanted to help people. The question was how she wanted to help them. Sarah quickly realized that psychiatric nursing was her passion, and that was how she would help. Particularly, she is passionate about advocating for patients with mental health issues and the importance of mental health. She is now working on the Adolescent Psychiatric Unit at Surrey Memorial Hospital. She finds the work rewarding as she can make an impression on a young person and allow them to make the changes to promote good health and well-being at a young age. She intends to enter, enter a graduate program in psychiatric nursing. Sarah is an active volunteer in the community. Notably, she is a member of the board for the Laura Zendre Memorial Scholarship Society Fund, which provides a scholarship to a Delta High School student in memory of Sarah's sister, who was a victim of violence against women. Congratulations, Sarah. We will now present the Distinguished Alumni Award introduced by Dr. Ferreris. The Distinguished Alumni Award recognizes a KPU alumni who has enhanced the reputation of the university through their outstanding career, public service, community service, arts and culture, or academic achievements. The awards will be accepted from President Alan Davis. The Distinguished Alumni Award is awarded to Tanya Dick. Tanya graduated from the BSN program at KPU in 2003 and her has served tirelessly as an advocate for quality nursing care with a particular focus on Aboriginal populations and rural communities. She holds a master's degree in nursing from the University of British Columbia and was recognized by the institution as the first Aboriginal graduate of the nurse practitioner program. Tanya is a dedicated advocate and role model for Aboriginal people interested in pursuing healthcare related education and serves as a nurse mentor to students in the KPU BSN post baccalaureate program. She recently served as a consultant for Aboriginal health policy with the BC Nurses Union, where she worked directly to foster quality health care for Aboriginals as well as provide support for other Aboriginal nurses. In July 2013, Tanya was elected as a director at large for the Association of Registered Nurses of BC. And in, 2000, in June 2015, she will be the first incoming president-elect of ARNBC. That is the incoming, not the first, the incoming president-elect for ARNBC. Tanya is from the Zawadunu 
First Nations Band of Kingcom Inlet, BC, and has applied her experience and her own personal understanding of the challenges faced by Aboriginal communities in her practice in places such as Bella Bella, Alert Bay, Masset on Haida Gwaii, and Kingcom Inlet. Her devotion to vulnerable and disadvantaged Aboriginal populations serves as an inspiration to healthcare professionals and community members alike. She is also determined to improve the very limited primary health care available in remote regions of British Columbia. Congratulations, Tanya. Now what you don't know is that Tanya flew in from Alert Bay last night and did a night shift the night before, so that is pretty astonishing. Thank you, Tanya, for coming. Thank you. Brandon Hastings from the KPU Alumni Association will provide a welcome to its newest members. Good afternoon, everyone. I address you today not only as an ambassador of our alumni association, but also as a proud KPU alumnus. On behalf of the KPU Alumni Association, it's my pleasure to extend my sincere congratulations to you, our graduates, and to your families. Graduates, as I'm sure you're all aware, your KPU education is exceptionally unique. KPU is Canada's only polytechnic university, and I know that I, for one, am extremely proud and grateful to have received a KPU education. And although I'm sure in many ways you feel as though your journey here at Kwantlen is coming to an end, I want to remind you that KPU will always be your alma mater. Be proud of that fact. KPU is a place that helps set the foundation from where you are going. And even though you may never take classes here again, your alumni association will always be with you to share and support in your growth for the years to come. Currently, our Alumni Association has over 46,000 members, and now that you've graduated, you've become members of that community. Be sure to fill in the card we'll be handing out when you cross the stage and drop it off the alum at the alumni table during the reception to follow this ceremony. In return, we'll present you with a gift, and you can sign up um, for your alumni card at the alumni table during the reception. The KPU Alumni Association's goal is simple. We wanna connect our graduates, create a, Cape, a community of KPU alumni working together to engage our local community while maintaining and building vital relationships. We're a growing organization and we wanna provide our members with relevant resources to help them stay successful. Our alumni are everywhere and they're doing some amazing things. We're extremely proud to be part of their success and we cannot wait to be proud of yours. It is my pleasure to once again welcome you to alarm our alumni community, a place where you can inspire and be inspired by, by your fellow graduates. Your, far, your hard work is finally paid off, and know this. We are eagles, and as you end this chapter, it's time for you to spread your wings and soar. Congratulations, class, class of 2015. Well, this has been a pretty amazing graduation. The, the student uh, award winners, uh, they're incredible stories. Tanya's story, and Jim, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you've been lucky enough, uh, graduates, uh, to graduate in the company of one of BC's great leaders of, of any kind. Good leaders are driven by principles and by values, and, and that certainly is the case of Jim Sinclair. But in my limited experience, principled leaders can come in two types. Uh, there are those who are uncompromising and passionate and committed to their cause, but somehow cause divisiveness among people. And there are those like Jim Sinclair who are just as uncompromising, passionate, and committed to his principles and, and values, uh, but are able in some way to bring people together for the overall benefit of our society. And it's not surprising that the nomination of Jim Sinclair for an honorary degree, which is not a simple task, I should add, 
was made by both the forces of darkness and evil, <laughs> me, and the forces of light and goodness, Terry Van Steinberg, president of the KFA, and Nikki Pearson on behalf of the BCGEU. There's a moral in there. <laughs> Chancellor, members of the board, faculty and staff, graduates and friends, KPU is a university for our times, a polytechnic university, open and accessible and relevant to both local needs and the global issues of our society. It's a university that is driven by teaching and learning, engaged with our communities, and enriched by our scholarship. We strive tirelessly to become the very best in our sector of higher education, blending in many different ways the classroom with the workplace and the community and the world we live in, so that our graduate, graduates will be successful in their careers and will be engaged as citizens. We believe that our graduates need both bread and roses, the ability to make a living, the bread, and also the ability to make that life worth living, the roses. All of us here have had the honor and the privilege of helping each of you along the way in reaching your educational goals. Thanks for choosing us. Friends and family, thank you all for you, all you have done in supporting our graduates and for being here today. We have a big ambitions for KPU. We intend to be better and bigger and bolder. As alumni, I urge you to stay in touch with us and prepare to be proud of and amazed by your alma mater. So go forth. And if you haven't got one already, take the advice my father gave to me when I graduated, those three little words that meant so much, get a job. <laughs> this concludes our convocation. I'd like to thank all those who have been involved in the planning and execution of today's ceremony. There were many new faces in new roles this year and you've done a great job and you made us look good. I invite you to join us in the reception hosted by the Kwantlen Student Association in Convocation Hall in Surrey, Maine. Please rise and remain standing until the platform party and the graduates have exited the convocation. We'll meet you over in Convocation Hall for hugs and photos. Chancellor Melville, please dismiss the convocation. In honor of our deep respect for the Kwantlen First Nation, I offer this blessing in harmony with and with deep respect for the many faiths and philosophic traditions represented here today. As you continue on life's journey, may you walk tirelessly, may the Creator walk with you, may His peace be in your minds, may Her love be in your hearts, all my relations. I declare the convocation dismissed. Oh.